what do we do so to get to this point about great companies? Okay. So what makes a great company? Not just some great people and service people. It's about the people, but what makes that? So we talked about culture, but just because you have a good culture doesn't necessarily mean your company is going to be great. It could just be good, right? So what makes it great as you sit here and process it and think about it? So I say, Glenn, what's your definition of a great company? I think a great company, uh, first of all, any great company starts with great leadership. It just whether that's one entrepreneur, whether that's the group of executives at the top, whatever the leadership team is. And I don't know how. I mean, I know you two guys are, and then it'll cascade down a little. Has bit. Has to right mm-hmm. to become right a great company. It does to become a great company. It's, it starts with leadership because it never starts at the bottom, right? It doesn't. It doesn't flow that way. It why start, not? Why starts, doesn't it start at the bottom? It, it, and I'm not always politically correct. So right. Who gives a shit about this? But right. it's why doesn't it? I, I'm not. I'm not saying that that throughout the company there, there won't be people that, that you may not ever believe that can make it. I, I, I think the bottom, you can find, when I say bottom, that's a terrible thing no, to say it. But we're evolving. People, people throughout the company, even entry level entry people. Entry level in Entry company. level people could have good ideas and you should, you should a, a great company listens to anything. A great company, you know, a great company is, is, is when you can walk around a, a, an office now it's Zoom, which I again I'm 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 a struggle with the whole Zoom culture. I just am, am, am so I w- we won't get into that. But it's somebody that walks around just like you said this, the new guy you had started three or four months ago. He probably didn't know you knew who he was, but you popped by and said, "Hey, dude, great meeting you." Hey, uh, Anthony. Hey, Luke. Hey, Anthony, yeah, hey, Katie. Couldn't believe you knew your name, and then you said, "Hey, great job on your first sale." And he's going, "How the hell you know how I mean that? Those are the things that happen in great companies. They are organic." They aren't, they aren't scripted, um, and people feel comfortable being around and being at work. Those work environments are, are incredible. And so what makes a great company? I mean, I think there's a, a thousand answers of what makes a great company. You, you ask me, I think it starts at the top with leadership, and the people that you hire have to buy into your vision. Does In, in your vision, you've got to be somebody that's willing to – uh, admit that you know what we went this way and it might have been the right way and and I'm definitely willing to listen I'm who uh, you know I, I'm willing to who's got an Ray, idea yeah here? so who's, Ray Dalio wrote that book principles right I hadn't ever thought about the idea of really the principle of his book is this idea meritocracy and so even though I heard about stuff in college and you hear leaderships you just don't hear these specific things often And an idea meritocracy means it doesn't matter if it's Glenn's opinion today or Saul's opinion or Kyle's or Mike's or Brett's or Mark's. We just want the best one. Mm -hmm. So you put all the ideas on the table and you're completely open minded and willing to be wrong because the only thing you care about is the best idea. And that's what's going to win. That's it. That's that's great company. Yeah. And and, and it's the the, the process flushes that out. Right. Like the the process of having great people like you're talking about, great leadership and, and, and great support people. And continuing to be open minded and listen and look for those look for those those great ideas, right? Because because I think a great company has to be different than the other companies, right? Like if you're offering a service or a product, you either have to be able to do it better than somebody else or do it differently. And if you, you know, everybody wants to believe they've if they start a company that's a great company, if they've started a company that's got a great culture, a great culture is is when somebody's wrong. It's, it's they don't they're not scared to be wrong again. I mean, if you know, I've been in rooms where where you've got the president, you know, we we've got our executive team, and you bring in buyers or you bring in whoever, right? Whatever company you have, and and your best people, you know how good they are, but they won't speak up, and you're going, dude, you got some. I need you. I'm asking the question because you're the expert. I'm not. Speak up. I need. I need people. I know how good you are. So why need, is that? I, so I'm going to interrupt when I catch yeah. something good. So why do you need that person to speak up? You said they're the expert. Why is that essential? Well, because it, in a, in a company, I, at least I'll speak for me. I knew this much. My talent was people liked working for me. My talent was I, I, I respected the people that worked for me. I'd do anything for anybody that worked for me. And by the way, I'd work I'd work as much or more than anybody there. Always have, always will. But I wasn't an expert in finance. I wasn't an expert in in uh, 
in distribution, IT, uh, in, uh, analytics, none of that. I had I had instincts. I could look at something without the numbers and, and get it right most of the time. But as you got bigger, you needed analytics. So I, I, I relied on whoever it was. So it's Jeff, important. Jeff Joukowsky, yeah. or, you know, whoever so the, it was. It's important because the best idea probably is going to lie somewhere else. 100%. Right. Listen. 